this is an unboxing video of the Bema CP755ND. It is a two inch throat compression driver um, with a four inch diaphragm. The diaphragm is titanium with a polymer surround. So let's take a look at this lovely driver here. These are fairly difficult to get because Bema doesn't really advertise them for sale but we have our ways of getting them. So let's take a look at this thing here. Let me get the box out of the way. Um, Bama drivers are always so nicely constructed. This is one lovely device here. Nicely made, nicely labeled. It's got push connectors here. This is one monster of a driver. It's got a two inch opening throat size, meaning it's got to use a two inch opening horn, not the one inch opening horns we commonly use with the, that's an ME45. We had to step it up to Bama's larger horn, the TD460N, which I'll unbox in a moment and tell you a few little interesting details about it. But what's interesting about this driver here is that it's a titanium dome, like I said, which is very stiff, very light, but the problems with the titanium dome is that it tends to break up in the higher frequencies, getting harsh, kind of spitty. They have remedied this situation by mounting on a polyester surround, meaning it's like a skirt that goes around the edges of the titanium, so when the titanium flexes and resonates at the edges, it's basically absorbed and dissipated. This allows the dome to go all the way out to 20 kilohertz with a few with little help from the horn here. Um, so it's well made, it's lovely, it's super heavy. I think it weighs like, I don't know, 14 pounds or something like that. It's a pretty big chunk. Uh, mounting surface looks nice. Like I said, it's got push connectors, which I really appreciate versus the regular connectors. So um, it's a great horn. So now we're going to move on to the other half of the party here. And that is the TD460N horn. And then we'll get to that in just a moment. The next part of the video here is the TD460N uh, horn. It is a 17 inch wide by 11 inch tall horn. It is not cast aluminum. Uh, Bema thought it was better that we not do that or they not do that because the fact that aluminum of that size can be pretty, it can ring and it's pretty heavy actually. Even the ME45 is a heavy horn but it's not really large enough to ring appreciably especially in the frequency band that it plays in, which is like 3000 hertz on up. This horn will play down to around 800 hertz and go all the way out to 20 kilohertz. And you might say, that's not possible. A horn this size cannot reach 20 kilohertz, maybe 15, but I'm gonna show you how and why they have attained that. So bear with me while I open this case up here. All right, let's take a look. Last time I tried this, I cut a hole in the end of my finger. But let me tell you a little trick. Super glue works wonders. So, it's really not that heavy, thank goodness. But um, it's a nice horn. It's solid, it's well damped. It's made out of like a, not plastic, but a type of a polymer that's pretty inert. I mean, as you can tell here, it's actually a lot beefier than you can see. It's fairly thick, but there is a trick here they use to get this in to go all the way out to 20 kilohertz, and I'll show you what it is. It's been around since 1987. There's a patent on it that talks about a vein inside the throat of the horn that that uh, causes the high frequencies 
to behave as if they're leaving a smaller throat or a smaller horn, which allows them to be uh, directed a little better and not spread out as much and drop off. So I'm going to show you that. From the, this is the end here where it mates to the compression driver. As you can see, there's a slot there. You can see that in the diagrams. But in Bama's pictures and stuff, they don't do a very good job of showing the interior of the horn, which is where all the trickery is at. I'm hoping you can see inside here. Let me get a little closer towards the light. There's kind of like a duck bill in here. There's a vein inside here that's shaped like kind of a V shape that is the uh, guide for the high frequencies. I'll show a close-up photo of that for you guys so you can see it better. But that helps guide the highs so they're not spread out amongst the entire large mouth of the horn because high frequencies, as you know, are short. So with that said, uh, that's how that works. The combination of the two, the uh, compression driver, the CP755ND with his titanium diaphragm, and this horn, and then there's one little trick I will tell you about later that helps their high frequencies, which has been around a very long time. JBL and Altec use that technique in their crossovers. Um, I will tell you about how that works in the very next video.